Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. Today, I had a realization. Amidst all the confusion, all of a sudden, the economic picture came clear. I was driving in the car this morning, and a certain calm came over me. I've been wondering for weeks why there's conflicting economic data, and I was unable to make sense out of it. Now, I know what you're thinking. Victor, you need to get a life. When a moment of clarity about the economy is exciting to you, you need therapy. So without any apologies, I'm here to tell you I can hardly contain my excitement. We're hearing that the U.S. economy is strong, that the economy in Europe is unexpectedly strong. Even in Canada, the economy is strong. Employment is strong, and we had 50-year low unemployment. But there's one thing I know about the economy. I treat it like a law of physics. We all learned about Newton's second law of physics back in high school. An object at rest will stay at rest, and an object in motion will remain in motion. It speaks to the law of conservation of momentum. Well, we don't have a corresponding law in economics, at least I don't think so. And what that law is, simply stated, for every unit of economic output, there's an equivalent unit of energy consumed somewhere in the world. Those two are inextricably linked, energy and the economy. If the economy is growing, we will see it in terms of growing global energy consumption. If the economy is shrinking, then we'll see it in terms of falling energy consumption. You don't need to wait for the Bureau of Labor and Statistics to tell you retrospectively that six months ago we were in a recession. You can figure this out pretty much in real time. Now, of course, you won't have all of the world in recession at the same time. Parts of the world could be experiencing economic growth and other areas experiencing economic contraction. When you enter a recession, it's a slow process. Supply chains are measured in months. By the time a raw material makes its way through the manufacturing process and finally appears at the cash register in the department store, it can be many months. But in an economic downturn, we first see the signs in international trade. That's where it starts. Shipments of goods between countries start to fall first as companies aim to reduce inventories. Now, China is supposed to be emerging from months of COVID-19 lockdowns. Their economy is supposed to be restarting. But at the time when their economy is supposed to be consuming more energy, we see nine weeks of crude oil inventory builds in the United States. Now, there's no extra oil in the world on a week-by-week basis. So if the U.S. is getting an extra million barrels a day, it has to be coming from somewhere. The only explanation is that that extra oil should have been consumed in Asia and it's been redirected to the U.S. and going into storage. We can tell what a million barrels a day means in terms of economic output. That's roughly half of California's daily consumption, or about 40% of Canada's daily consumption. A million barrels a day is a lot of oil. What's amazing to me is all the PhD economists employed at the Federal Reserve are not correlating their economic measurements with energy consumption. If there's excess oil or excess natural gas or excess coal that is not being consumed, it could mean that economic output's falling. It might mean we also have a warm winter, but it can often mean economic output is falling. If prices for these commodities are falling, and they've been steadily falling over the last few months, it means that energy is not being consumed and that inventories are building. We're seeing that shipments from China to the U.S. are down by 23% over the last several months. Export from this world's second largest economy fell 6.8% during the first two months of 2023 from a year earlier extending a string of year-over-year declines stretching back to October. Data from China's Customs Bureau showed that very clearly on Tuesday this week. As exports to the U.S. and Europe have declined, China has been working to increase exports to Southeast Asia in order to make up for the fall in demand. Exports to Southeast Asia were up 9% in the first two months of the year. If you look at South Korea, another bellwether for global trade, exports shrank for a fifth straight month in February, partly because demand from China weakened, but outbound shipments from South Korea fell 7.5% last month from a year earlier, though the decline wasn't as bad as January's 16.6% drop. Exports of semiconductors are down 42.5% as global demand for electronics continues to falter. So we have signs of international trade experiencing dramatic reductions. We do live in an interconnected world. We see excess energy and oil prices have fallen 7.5% in the last week alone. If Korea and China are both experiencing significant reductions in shipments to the U.S., don't tell me the U.S. economy is growing. Yes, the U.S. might be bleeding down inventories, but that's how all economic cycles work. We have a law of nature, 
on the law of economics, that once you see it, you cannot unsee it. At least I can't unsee it any longer. I hope you can share my excitement at this newfound understanding. As you think about that, have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.